Here we are, driving at 70 kilometers an hour along a busy motorway, but nobody is holding the steering wheel. Just how safe are driverless cars, and will we really be using them in 10 years' time? This is a motorway like any other in Sweden, but this car is certainly not ordinary. It's one of several prototypes that Volvo engineers are using to test their latest automatic technology in real traffic. The car has very good knowledge on the surrounding vehicles and uh, it's always having a safe distance of the car ahead. It's, um, it's always uh, monitoring the traffic. Uh, so in many ways I feel safer actually than if I would drive myself. Just like Volvo, this Audi prototype offers the same hands-free driving experience. The car automatically assesses the situation on the road and, if appropriate, invites the driver to switch to autopilot. When certain conditions are met, such as I'm not driving faster than 130 kilometers per hour, the road has lane markings and I'm not performing any risky moves, then I get an automatic prompt to switch to autopilot. A message tells me that the autopilot's ready and I can activate it by pressing these two buttons. These demo cars automatically stay within the road markings and match their speed to the traffic around them. They can also assist the driver with manoeuvres, such as changing lanes or overtaking. I want to change the lane to the right, meaning a double press on the right pedal. And the sensors are monitoring the side, finding a good gap. And if a good gap has found, it will turn on the indicator and perform the lane change. But these self-driving cars don't mean drivers are off the hook. In an emergency, the controls can quickly switch back to manual. The driver has to stay alert. The manufacturers are working on perfecting the automatic settings before releasing the cars onto the market. This means improving the awareness of the cars. Automatic cars rely on a number of cameras, radars and other sensors to understand their environment. Various signals are fused together in the car's computer brain. These tell the autopilot what's happening around the car. These cars that have multiple sensors could be ever vigilant. That means that they could respond to any type of threat and also traffic situation around us. The autopilot system is fitted in the boot of this prototype, but commercially available self-driving systems will have to be more compact, affordable and efficient. What we need is to have a vehicle that is able to understand the complete environment around us. Uh, we also need to understand the other vehicles and their intention around us. Uh, and not to forget, we also need to have the human-machine interaction in a good implemented way in the vehicles. Although confident on motorways, driverless cars can't yet handle complex urban traffic. Individual cars will need to communicate not just with each other, but with road infrastructure to flow through traffic safely and efficiently. I believe for the urban scenario, you cannot rely on the vehicle and vehicle sensors only. You have to be connected to your environment. So it means uh, we, in future, we may have uh, many sensors at an intersection, maybe laser scanners and so on, that are just um, understanding what is ongoing at this intersection, how many people are crossing the intersection and so on, pedestrians, for example. And then this information uh, has to be shared with the vehicle, so the vehicle is uh, See, seeing more than uh, by its own sensors only. It will take years of research and development to get self-driving cars working together. Engineers at a university in Paris are designing algorithms to help automatic cars coordinate their manoeuvres. 
The problem is that there's a contradiction between two objectives. The faster I go, the less confident I am. If I want to be really confident, I go very slowly, and that's not efficient. So how do we increase both at the same time? For that, we need not only a good system of communication, but also good algorithms. In this computer simulation, self-driving cars cross an intersection while wirelessly coordinating with each other. But in real life, communication problems might occur. The more realistic a simulation is, the more problem there will be. But we are trying to take all those uh, problems into consideration. But in this way, like we can solve it step by step. All this means drivers will be left with little to do. They're likely to lose concentration. Will they be able to react quickly enough in the case of an emergency? Well, that is one of the things we're Researchers in Sweden are studying this problem using a truck cab simulator. So how the driver reacts in terms of steering. So what we will measure is how fast he reacts because he's requested to take over control but also how he reacts in terms of if he's wobbling with the steering wheel and his braking patterns. In this test, the driver watches passively as his simulated truck drives on autopilot. Suddenly, the system spots a broken car at the side of the road. The driver reacted quickly here, grabbing the steering wheel to prevent a collision. But what about other drivers? If you haven't been driving the scenario before, then suddenly they can tell you that, OK, look at that helicopter over there, and suddenly there's an elk on the road when you look back, and then you really, oh, yeah, you get quite surprised. Absolutely. We also study what happens if the driver is engaged in a secondary task, for example, um, playing a game on, on his smartphone, for example. A distracted driver may become unaware of the situation on the road. If the driver doesn't react to an emergency alert to take back control, the system should do its best to either keep driving or stop safely. Scientists at the Institute of Communication and Computer Systems in Athens are working on a visual display system to help self-driving and traditional cars drive safely side by side. Drivers in mixed traffic flow will face new challenges, which will require better solutions. The aim is to provide the driver with all the necessary information in a simple and a fast way. To make sure the driver understands what's going on, gets accurate directions and acts safely. The same system can also be installed in traditional cars to assist drivers with simple maneuvers. We'll drive slowly behind a vehicle, and then, at a certain moment, the app will suggest an overtaking maneuver, which we will then perform. This information makes the driver feel more comfortable about what's going on in the vehicle and on the road. Such confidence boosting is one of the challenges of car automation. Researchers in Germany are developing a futuristic way of helping drivers of automatic cars stay alert. They've installed LED lights around the inside of the car, which change colour in response to danger.
We use various colors. In the manual mode, green means everything's fine. Red warns you to be careful, there's danger. Blue indicates smooth automatic mode, to let the driver know that everything's all right. The autopilot is doing its job. The simulator tests how effective the LED lights are by presenting the driver with unexpected roadworks or nearby cars taking risks. The bright warning lights are almost impossible to miss. The bright display is installed around the driver. It helps him when he's not concentrating, for example, if he's driving on automatic mode but reading a newspaper. It will catch his attention wherever he is looking. It's a big advantage of this technology. If the situation is uncertain, the autopilot will change colour. This warns the driver to be alert, that they might need to react quickly to something. This makes the driving feel easy, safe and comfortable. The system means that I know what to expect at any given moment. As driverless technology gets safer, researchers believe within 15 years, automatic cars will be increasingly common.